What's up and welcome to my point of view. I am your fat and opinionated host and it has now been over a month since Bud Light decided that it wanted to enter into the culture war. But I think they bit off more than they can chew because they have been getting absolutely eviscerated ever since. Some may make the argument that they didn't know what they were getting themselves into that they didn't know how intense the culture war can be. But at the end of the day, they dug their own grave and now they have to lie in it. And it's funny because I was watching a movie recently on Netflix. It was called All Quiet on the Western Front or something like that. A movie about World War I. And in the movie, much like a lot of young people back in the day, it showed how young kids, young boys, young men were so eager to sign up to go to war, to fight for their country. And then before they knew it, the horrors and the reality of what war is really like would smack them across their faces. They weren't prepared. They were eager to go. But once they got on that battlefield, they were not prepared for what they saw. And that's the same with Bud Light. They were eager. They were ready to enlist and to sign their names to join the woke brigade. They thought that the woke army all had their backs. They thought that they were on the winning side. They thought that they were just going to crush the opposition. We're going to come out here. We're going to allow cross-dressing men who prey on kids to get their faces printed on the side of our beer bottles. We are going to join the culture war and we're going to make a firm statement. Well, how did that work out for them? They've lost billions of dollars. They're scrambling, firing people every day. They're spending millions on new ad campaigns to try to make people forget the old ad campaign that got them here in the first place. It's not working out well. And now it appears as if their stock just got downgraded. Let's take a look at this article. Bud Light parent company's stock downgraded by HSBC amid branding crisis and huge sales drop. Retail sales of Bud Light have decreased since the marketing campaign featuring he who must not be named. HSBC has downgraded Anheuser-Busch InBev stock to hold amid a crisis following Bud Light's marketing campaign featuring Mulvaney. Carlos Leboy, managing director at HSBC's global beverage sector, says that there are deeper problems than ABI admits after the social media partnership with the crossdresser back in April. Is ABI's leadership getting the brand culture transformation right? It's mixed. LeBoy wrote Wednesday in a note. At AmBev, we think the answer is yes. In the U.S., we think it's no. The way this Bud Light crisis came about a month ago, management's response to it, and the loss of unprecedented volume and brand relevance raises many concerns and questions, LeBoy continued. LeBoy cited a beer marketer's insight, insights note, which reported a drop in beer sales of possibly over 25% in April. Why did its U.S. leadership underestimate the risk of pushback given the recent experience of other firms? Is AB hiring the best people to grow the brands and gauge the risk? If Budweiser and Bud Light are iconic American ideas that have long brought consumers together, why did these marketers fail to invite new consumers without alienating the core base of the firm's largest brand. Ambev is a Brazilian brewery, also owned by Anheuser-Busch InBev. In the first three weeks of April, 
Sales in the U.S. of Bud Light dropped to the equivalent of 1% of the company's global volume for that time period alone. Sales of Bud Light in retail so stores also fell by 21.4% in the week ending April 22nd when compared to the same time period last year. In comparison, Coors Light and Miller Light saw their sales increase by nearly 21%, according to analysis of Nielsen data by Bump Williams Consulting. So it's a bloodbath, people. There's no denying it. The stock has now been downgraded. It's like, not only has Bud Light lost big, They've been absolutely humiliated. We have added insult to injury. And the crazy part is, folks, I know it might seem wild, but this is just the beginning. Think about this. I know that we have our regular everyday beer drinkers, right? You go to the store, you drink your beer on a, a daily basis. Nothing against that. But the fact is, during these upcoming summer months, those are like some of the best months for beer sales. Sure, you may crack open a cold one while you're at home on the couch. But do you know how many people are casual drinkers? Who maybe they don't drink on a daily basis. They don't have a 24 pack sitting in their fridge. But when they're out and they're, they're on the beach, when they're going around vacationing for summer, they drink a lot of beer. They drink a lot more alcohol than they usually do. So Bud Light has not experienced the worst of it yet. For one, I believe every day more and more people are learning about the boycott. More and more people are succumbing to peer pressure, you know, and not drinking Bud Light anymore. And now we're going to have the casuals coming in this summer who are going to be buying anything other than Bud Light. We got the NFL season coming up. There are There is so much Bud Light sold at NFL stadiums across America. It's insane the amount of Bud Light that is usually sold across football stadiums in America. If this boycott carries over to them, and you got sports fans football fans out here embarrassed to buy Bud Light, that's going to be devastating. It's already happening with baseball games. Even in places like Boston, up north, people aren't even drinking this stuff. So you know it's 10 times worse when you go down south. So I don't see them recovering from this. You know, I knew that this was a powerful boycott. I knew that this, this boycott had legs. I've been talking about it for weeks. But even I, I don't think anyone is prepared for where this can go. The fact that this is still a trending topic, I'm not bored of talking about it. You guys aren't bored listening to information about it. And it's like every day, or not every day, Every week, every couple of weeks, we're ready and excited to see the sales numbers so we can watch the drop. It's become entertaining. Bud Light has become the joke that all of us are in on. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, it's a bonding, it's almost like a bonding thing. We're bonding over our disdain for Bud Light and what they did with that ad. And then you got the gay community. They're upset at Bud Light as well. And now they're boycotting. So, man, it, 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 it's, it's worse than I think anyone could ever imagine. But I want to go back to one quote. Because this guy asked, If Budweiser and Bud Light are iconic American ideas that have brought consumers together, why did these marketers fail to invite new consumers? Did, why did they underestimate the risk of the pushback? Are they hiring the right people? No, they aren't. 
The fact is that American companies right now aren't hiring the right people. It's not just Bud Light. They're hiring these woke activists. A lot of these companies are almost forced to fill quotas. They have diversity hires and things of that nature because it all has to do with ESG scores, which is a conversation for another day. But for those of us who know and understand what's going on, we know that for a lot of these companies, it's more than about the money. And that's why it's so important that we keep our foot on Bud Light's neck right now. Because these companies, when they release these ads, when Disney, when any company you think of, when they put these weird, questionable, what some may say call propaganda, when they insert this stuff into these cartoons and movies and commercials and wherever, they're doing it knowing it's going to hurt their returns. But they're prepared to take a loss right now. They're prepared to lose a little bit of money right now because they're banking on living in a totally different world in the next few years. To where, okay, sure, we lost a few billion dollars. Who cares? We're getting our ESG scores. You know what I mean? So they're banking on our world changing completely. And they're more worried about ESG scores than they are money right now. But these companies cannot operate without money. So when you see an ad campaign like what happened with Bud Light, I want you to understand that this is not a bunch of brain dead people releasing this stuff, not knowing what's going on. Bud Light is trying to downplay it like, hey, you know, we didn't know this, you know, this ad firm that we hired. We didn't know they were going to do this. Listen, they had to write off on it. They knew it was coming. And there is risk management at these big businesses. They out, they weighed the risk and they thought that the reward in the long run outweighed the risk. They knew and prepared that they were going to, they prepared for losing some money behind this. But they did not prepare for how far this has gone. I think they prepared to have sales down for maybe a week or two. They prepared to maybe be trending on Twitter for a couple of days. They did not prepare for over a month of just continuous backlash that is going to lead into a lifetime of backlash because we're not going anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. You're not going anywhere. And wherever we're at, we're damn sure not drinking Bud Light. Let me know your thoughts though down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit the thumbs up button, hit the subscribe button, ring that notification bell. And as always, remember to remain opinionated.